Welcome, brothers and sisters, once again, wherever you are tuned in. We thank the Lord so much for the privilege of sharing in His Word. It is something that uh, we don't take for granted. And uh, I just want to welcome you to this session of The Latter Rain. This is the series, The Latter Rain. And uh, we are going to look at... Uh, the presentation, the works of atonement. I pray that uh, you will be blessed in this presentation and uh, the Lord will continue guiding you into the path of righteousness and uh, everything that you desire the Lord to do for you. I know he says that if we ask in faith he will be able to do for us. And so welcome once again as we look at uh, this important session, the works of atonement. This is in the the number seven in the series, the latter reign. Let us pray. Uh, our heavenly Father, we thank you because uh, you are merciful unto us. In this day of atonement, Lord, help us to listen to what Christ is speaking to us and be able to participate in the works of atonement. Thank you for thy grace which is sufficient in time we need it. For you have bid us in Hebrews 14, 15, 4, 15, that we may come and obtain it in the time of need. And so as never before we need you in our lives, take us higher than we have ever been before and let the glory of man be laid in dust that Christ alone may be exalted. We thank you, Father, for in Christ Jesus' name we ask of these things. Amen. And... Uh, Uh, I may say that um, the presentation of today is uh, more of like the presentation of number five with added details, the final demonstration. And I pray that uh, you be blessed as uh, we bring you this. This is the Gospel Sounders Rekindling Reformation dedicated to spreading the three angels messages around the world uh, as we know that uh, we are in the day of atonement and uh, there are some things that we learn in the day of atonement and in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 27 and 28 let us stand there Leviticus 20, 23 27 and 28 this is what we read in the scriptures if you have found it in your bible follow along with me also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement it shall be an holy convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the lord and ye shall do no work in that same day for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the lord your god and so, on the day of atonement, the children of Israel were atoned for, for the 
their sins. Their sins were blotted out of the sanctuary. And uh, we know that uh, in 1844, Christ has been uh, ministering in the most holy place. And uh, the Day of Atonement only lasted uh, one day. The Day of Atonement only lasted one day. And when that day started, what we can expect is what is written in the book of Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 which says and behold I come quickly and my word is with me to give every man according as his work shall be and so on the day of atonement there it was one day and after that the high priest came to bless the people and to give them according to what they have done that is the works i come and give you and reward you according to what you have done and so since 1844 we could have expected christ to come very soon after that but before he comes we know that under the ministration in the most holy place we must have things like the third angel's message being uh, proclaim which is uh, includes uh, the seal of god the loud cry to be there the latter rain the close of probation time of jacob's time of trouble the second coming then we have a millennium resurrection and destruction of the wicked then recreation of the earth in that order and uh, what was basically the main thing on the day of atonement uh, it was when when you read uh, the book of uh, Daniel chapter Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 This is what we find that uh, it says on the day of atonement and he said unto me unto 2300 and day, 300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed cleansed why was the sanctuary to be cleansed because the sanctuary had been made dirty by the sins of the people who were uh, 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 continually sinning and uh, their sins were going into the sanctuary so they had to be blotted out they had to be made whole again the sanctuary had to be cleansed so that there may be no more sin coming to the sanctuary and uh, when you look at the margin of uh, Daniel chapter 8 14 it talks about the sanctuary being justified, the sanctuary being restored, the sanctuary being made whole again. And so in the day of atonement, it was actually the blotting out of the sins in the sanctuary. The sins had made the sanctuary that end on the day of atonement, it had to be cleansed. Now, for this sanctuary, on this day, I'd like also you to notice something in the book of Daniel. the book of Daniel chapter 7 and uh, look at Daniel chapter 7 verses 25 see what it says actually Daniel chapter 25 chapter 7 verses uh, 25 this is uh, what uh, we find there for what does it, in, it entail for the sanctuary to be cleansed and he shall speak great words, that is, the, the, the little horns against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. He thought oh, the end of the matter is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my uh, cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. So you see that for the sanctuary to be cleansed and the kingdom given to the saints, the, the little horn power has to be taken away and it is dominion consumed and destroyed. Why should the little horn's power 
and kingdom to be taken away and consumed and be uh, uh, actually uh, destroyed. Look uh, what, uh, why this have to happen. The book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Uh, I'd like just to highlight something. about uh, why this little horn power has to be taken away. The little horn gave the power to the beast, which we understand it is the Roman power. Uh, I'll just go to Revelation chapter 13, not 12. So, this little horn, the same as the one in Revelation chapter 13. Why does it is kingdom, dominion has to be taken away? Look here why it has to be taken away. So that the power may be given to the saints. Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 and 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea. This is the little horn having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of the bear, of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. So, what are we basically saying? For the sanctuary to be cleansed and the dominion given back to the saints, the little horn power, the beast power of Revelation chapter 13 has to be taken away. Because the power that it has was given to it by Satan himself. And Satan is the instigator and originator of sin. And so what is being done here, the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And in order for this sanctuary to be cleansed, the bestial power, the beast power, the purple power, and his dominion, which is the dominion, the dominion and the kingdom of sin, has to be taken away. And that is the cleansing of the sanctuary. He makes the people sin. But God gives them victory, and in this victory, then the kingdom of Satan is destroyed. Although Satan is working on the background, but the beast power is on the forefront working for him. And so the dominion of this kingdom has to be taken away so that the kingdom of righteousness should be set up. And this is part of the cleansing of the sanctuary. And so these things must happen. This is the whole issue of the Day of Atonement for Satan to be defeated. We know that uh, he was defeated 6,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago he was also defeated. Uh, and then the last generation has to defeat him. And so it has to uh, uh, demonstrate the works of atonement. That is being clothed with the garment of righteousness. Being clothed with the power from on high. And so, and uh, this last generation, it is work. It is to finish the work. You find that um, uh, when Christ come, came onto the earth, look at the book of John chapter 5 verses 26. John uh, 5 26. What was the mission of Christ? Look, I'll start from verse 24. I'll start from verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is come when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given uh, to the Son to have life in himself. And uh, I wanted you to see that, and then I turn you to John 5, 36. Going to John 5, 36, why is this important that the Son gives the people his life? So that, as he has had victory, that also the people might have victory. They may do marks of the Father. The main point of Jesus Christ coming on this earth and being given life is to give us that life, the victorious life, so that also in this last generation we may be a people who can be able to finish the work. 536, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same work that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So on the day of atonement, on the cleansing of the sanctuary, people will know 
that um, the Father and the Son have sent us if we do the works of the Father and the Son. And what is this work? To finish up the work. What work? The work of sin. As he finished his work and sat with his Father. So we are also to finish the work and sit where he is if we have to go with the promise he has promised that he is coming back to take us. And so the works of atonement is the process of the sanctuary being cleansed and the saints partaking of the kingdom. But for them to do this, they have a work to be accomplished on this earth. And so we shall be able to show to the world that actually uh, uh, Christ in us by doing the works that Christ does. Look at um, the book of uh, John chapter 14 verses 10 to 11. John 14 10 and uh, 11. It says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The word that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the work themselves. So the works of Christ were to finish the, the, the sin problem, to come and manifest the name of the Father. In fact, uh, look at um, the book of John, chapter 17. John, John chapter 17, verse 6. John 17, 6, it says that uh, I have manifested thy name unto the, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me, and they have kept thy word. So Christ's work was to manifest the name of the Father, the character of the Father. The people living in the day of atonement, also their work is to manifest the work of the Father. And so look at John 17, 11, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I can be my holy Father. Keep your name, those who have given me, that they may be one as one. So the work of Christ is to manifest the name of the Father. People who are living in the end time, Again, they are kept by the Father's name, and Christ adds something on that. He says in 17.22 of John, 17.22, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, as even we are one. I, I expounded much on this, on this uh, on number five of the series, The Latter Rain, the, 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 test, the, the, the presentation called, the final demonstration. If you didn't watch it, go on my page and you'll be able to watch it. I go into details on the book of John chapter 17, verse 6, verse 11, and verse 22. And so this is the presentation, uh, the works of atonement. So Christ was given the glory by the Father, and that glory he gives unto his people so that they may be able to manifest the name of the Father, to bear the glory of the Father upon the earth. Nothing should preoccupy their work because the high priest was in the holy place and he was making an atonement for them. They, they had been separated from the Father because of sin. But now, because the high priest is making an atonement, then they are but one man John 17, 20 to 23. It says, John 17, 20 to 23, it says, I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their, their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be one perfect in one, they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now, one thing you recognize is that uh, on the day of uh, atonement, when the sacrifice had been accepted, when the sacrifice had been offered and it was accepted, 
the Shekinah glory came and filled the temple, the most holy place. And on this day of atonement, we are told, uh, look at um, the book of uh, Romans, Romans 12, 1 to 3. Romans chapter 12, 1 to 2, not 1 to 3. I'll uh, open it and uh, blow it on your screen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? That is the, the, the life in the most holy place. And so, on the day of atonement, when the sacrifice was accepted, the temple was filled with the Shekinah glory, and it showed that the people now, their offering were accepted. And so, if we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Lord, the Shekinah glory will fill us. And that is why we find, he says that, I in you, the Father in me, I in the Father, and I in you, and you in me. That is, the sacrifice has been accepted, and then our body are filled with the Shekinah glory of God, which is the Holy Spirit of God. In fact, when we offer our bodies as some living sacrifices, we are told in Second Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. First Corinthians three, sixteen, and seventeen. This is what the Word of God uh, says. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? That sanctuary in the wilderness, now you are the temple, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Shekinah glory of God is his spirit. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And so those who shall not be filled with the Shekinah glory of God, those who shall not be filled with the Shekinah, of glory, uh, uh, Shekinah glory of God, when Christ comes, he shall destroy them. Where did I find this idea? Look at uh, look at uh, the book of First uh, John chapter three. The book of First John chapter three. First John chapter three verses First uh, John chapter three verses one and two. 1 John 3, verses 1 and 1 John 3, 1 and 2. It says that, uh, Behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But, when we, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So the Bible says that um, we are the sons of God, and when Christ appears, we shall be like him. Remember on the day of atonement, the sins are cleansed and the Shekinah glory fills us. The power and the dominion of the little horn, who is the representative of Satan, is taken away. Sin is taken away. That is the part of the cleansing of the sanctuary and it involves the works of atonement so that we may be made whole. And so when Christ appears, we shall be like him. What does it mean we shall be like him? What does it mean? What does it present? When the Bible says we shall be like him, what does it mean? The book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, brothers and sisters. Colossians 3 verses uh, 4. Look at, these are wonderful things. I'll start from verse 1, going downwards. The book of Colossians chapter 3. I'll start from verse 1. This is what the Bible reads. If ye be then risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, 
and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 says that it does not appear what we shall be, but when he appears we shall be like him. How? Appear with him in glory. And the work of the work that is going on in the most holy place is for the saints to be filled with the Shekinah glory. The saints to be filled with the power of God. The saints to have the Shekinah glory in them. That is the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit in them. And so this is the work that is going on in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary above. And so we are made on the day of atonement. We are made like him. And then you notice that the glory which you gave me, I have given unto them. This is the work of atonement, that the glory of the Son may be given to the saints. His victorious life, that also they may put an end to sin. They may, as Christ manifested the name of the Father, also the saints must manifest the name of the Father. And so, uh, and John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12, we read that uh, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the, work, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to, the, to my Father. The reason for Christ going to the Father is to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit and to shed it forth to the saints so that they may do the same works of Christ. Now you ask, what are the works of Christ? What are the works of Christ? I'll just turn to you to the book of Luke, chapter 4. Chapter 4, sorry, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses... Luke chapter 4, verses 18. Luke 4, 18 and 19. What does the Bible say? Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, the Spirit of the Lord is upon Christ, and he has been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, deliver the captives, uh, give the blind sight, and proclaim liberty, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You go back, he says that, most assuredly, I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to my Father. So, these were the works that Christ was doing when he was on earth, in his warfare with sin. And what are the works, if these are the works of uh, Christ. Also, these works are found in uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 2. In fact, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 is a quotation of Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. But if this is the work of Christ, what is the work of the saint? Which is saying that they will do more work than uh, what he has done. Remember the work of Christ. Let us read it again in Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now, this is the work of Christ, the work of medical missionary work. The same work is given to the saints in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. It says, in Isaiah chapter 58, I'll go there with you. Isaiah chapter 58. He say, Is this not the first that I have chosen? 58, 6. To loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and there that you break every yoke. 
Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou dost cover them, him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. And then he says, what is pure religion? James 1, verse 27. James 1, verses pure religion. Was doing on pure religion undefiled. This is what yeah. we are told. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So, the same work that Christ was doing now, he gives to the saints on the day of atonement that they must, they may do it, and even more greater works that they should be do. These are the works of atonement that we are called to participate in. These are the works that um, we are called to do. I'm remembering also something in the book of Matthew chapter 25. The wise and the foolish virgins. The separation of the goats and the separation of the sheep. The book of Matthew chapter 25 31 to 46. Matthew 25, 25 verses 31 to 46. This is what we read. Matthew chapter 21 verses 41 to 46. It is written. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered, uh, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one from them one from the shepherd the sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goat and what is the then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. The same work in Luke chapter 4, verses 18, Isaiah chapter 61, is repeated for the wise virgins. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous under him, saying, Lord, when we when saw we thee unhungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink, when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee. Continued on. Or when saw we thee sick or, sick or in prison and came unto thee, and the king shall under and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. 41. Then shall he say unto also unto them on the left hand, Depart me, depart from me, cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the everlasting fire was not prepared for human beings, but for the fallen angels. For I was unhungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when... So we the unhungered or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And so the works that Christ came to do to battle with sin and set the captives free and do the medical missionary work, it's the same work that is entrusted to the people who are living in the end time. The same description, Job's description for Christ <laughs> while he was on earth is the same job description for the people living at the end of the time. They will do even greater works than Christ because it will be Christ actually performing the works in them. Uh, the book of uh, Mark chapter 16 
Mark chapter 16. This is what we read. It will be Christ doing the work in us. It will be Christ doing the work in us. 16, 19, and 20. The book of Mark. This is what we read. When actual Christ gave the early reign to the apostles uh, during the day of Pentecost. We read, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So it was Christ working with the disciples during the time of the early reign, and then it will be Christ working in us to do even greater works during uh, the day of atonement. The works of atonement have to be seen in us. And how will the Lord work with us and how did he work with them? The book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 17. Is it 317? 2 Corinthians 317. Sorry. 2 Corinthians uh, 3 verse 17. We say 317. I hope, brethren, you are learning something uh, and we are learning together. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 318. But we all with open face beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. This is what I was saying, that on the day of Pentecost, on the day of atonement, when the sacrifice was accepted, the people were filled, the, the temple was filled with the Shekinah glory. On the day of atonement, when the people have given themselves unto Christ, and not given their members of the body to sin, then they shall be filled with the Spirit of God. And where the Spirit of God there is liberty, there is freedom. People have been set free from sin, and they will. Uh, 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 Second Corinthians three eighteen says that as we continue to behold Him, we shall be changed into the same image from glory to glory. And uh, look at uh, Hebrews ten seventeen. Hebrews. 10, 17 and 18. Hebrews 10, 17 and 18. It says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. So Christ now can end his work in the most holy place because there is no more offering for sin. Why? The people who have come into the most holy place have been remitted their sins and they bear the glory of the Father and so, and the Son. So if they are bearing the glory of the Father and the Son, there is no more offering of sin. Now Christ can be able to come back on earth and claim them as his own, a church which is closed uh, in the glory of the Father and the Son. And it is ready to be translated. So. This is what Christ is doing in the heavenly sanctuary and we must cooperate in order to receive him in fullness that we may be cleansed of every spot. We must come to the point that we may partake of the divine nature. We might partake of Jesus Christ. We must partake of his fullness. We must accept his anointing and be able to to be turned into the same same image of Christ. We must be his representatives on earth. And that is when the Sabbath will be proclaimed even more fully. We must consider the works that Christ did when he was on earth and participate in them. Then our light will break forth. In fact, when you are going through the book of uh, Isaiah, you find this in Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11. If we start participating in these works of atonement, 
The same works that Christ did, Isaiah chapter 58 records this. Then shall your light break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water guard, a watered garden and like a spring of water whose heart, whose waters do not fail. It is doing the works of the book of Isaiah chapter 58. The same works that Christ was doing in Luke 4.18 when he received the anointing of the Father. So when we receive of the glory of the, Fa of the Son and start manifesting the name of the Father, then we shall be able to rise from obscurity and be able to proclaim the Sabbath more fully. These are the works that we are called to do. To reach unto the poor, to reach unto the maimed, to reach unto those who are in prison. Yeah. then the people will see that this is a religion where actually their works correspond their profession. And so, in order to participate in all this, what we need is the Spirit of Christ living in us. We need the Spirit of the Lord because we are told, Christ says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. And then he says that I'm able to do this, this and that. And so also us, we must have this spirit of the Father so that we can rise from obscurity and do the works of atonement. And Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4. Look at what it says. Isaiah 61 verse 4. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. This is what is written of Christ when he was anointed. Isaiah 61 speaks about Jesus Christ. Let us see in Isaiah chapter 58, will we be able to do the same work? Because Isaiah chapter 58 is a parallel of Isaiah chapter 61. What Christ did in Isaiah chapter 61, the saints have to do it in Isaiah chapter 50, 58. And then look at Isaiah chapter 58. We have just read, when Christ was anointed, he went about doing good, reaching to the poor, to the maimed, proclaiming liberty and the year of the Lord. And then he rebuilt the old ruins and the former desolation and repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations. This is the work that Christ did when he was on earth. The same work that Christ did in Isaiah 61, now the saints have to do it in Isaiah chapter 58 and let us see what is the end of that. Is it the same as the work of Christ? Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah Eight, that verse 13 and 14 proclaiming the Sabbath more fully in fact I'll start from verse 11 of Isaiah 58 this is so precious Isaiah 58 from verse 11 here is what we read and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. After doing the works mentioned from verse 3 downwards to verse 10. And make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. 12. Now this thing about the waters. I pray that the Lord will give me time to speak about it. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt 
honor it, not doing thy own way, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words, then, then thou shalt thyself in the Lord, and I'll call in the high place of the earth, and fill thee with the heritage of the Father, for the mouth of the Lord spoken. 11, verse 12, and they shall and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. This is the work the saints shall be able to accomplish on the day of atonement, the works of atonement. The same works that Christ was able to do in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 4. You see? So, that is why Christ says that he who believes in me, he shall be able to do the works I do and even more greater works. He did this in chapter 61 verse 4 and the same also have to accomplish that in chapter 8 verses 12, the works of atonement. But Christ says, without me, you can do nothing. So the secret of having the power of finishing the works of atonement is our lives to be hidden in Christ. That nothing may come between us and our God. We should dedicate our lives wholly unto him. Let me read of a spirit of prophecy. He says, I cannot too strongly urge all our church members, all who are true missionaries, all who believe the third angel's message, all who turn away their feet from the Sabbath, to consider the message of the 58th chapter of Isaiah. The work of beneficence enjoined in this chapter is the work that God requires his people to do at this time. It's a work of his own appointment. This is part of the work of atonement. We are not left in doubt as to where the message applies. And the time of it is marked fulfillment. For we read, They that shall be of thee shall build the old west places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in, God's memorial, the seventh day Sabbath. The sign of his work in creating the world has been displaced by the man of sin. God's people have a special work to do in repairing the bridge that has been made in his law and the nearer we approach the end the more urgent this work becomes it is only the medical missionary which is the right hand of the third angel's message that will give us a breakthrough that will be an entering wedge it will be the works of atonement that will make us be able to shine forth to the whole world in fact when that starts happening this is what we are told Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 3. This is what will happen if we participate in the works of atonement. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So, if we do not participate in the works of atonement and medical missionary work, we are sure we cannot arise and shine and bring those people who are in darkness into the marvelous light and the glory of God. And so the angel of Revelation chapter 18 coming down with great glory cannot shine in our lives if we are not participating in the works of atonement, which is the true medical missionary work of Luke chapter 4, 18. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2, and Isaiah chapter 58, verses 3 to verses 12. Unless we participate in this work of atonement, then we can be sure the glory of the Lord shall not uh, uh, rise upon us and we shall not rise from our obscurity. You know, Seventh-day Adventists have been, uh, uh, have, have been despised around the world. And it's only... The, the works of atonement that will make the world recognize there are a people whom God is using, a peculiar people who are not magicians, but through simple, natural way of ministering to the people, the Lord is working amongst them 
mightily. We read, This thus genuine medical missionary work is bound up inseparably with the keeping of God's commandment, of which the Sabbath is specially mentioned. Since it is the great memorial of God's creative power work, it is observant is bound up with the work of restoring the moral image of God in man. This is the ministry which God's people are to carry forward at this time. This ministry rightly performed will bring rich blessings to the church. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 265-260. What are we saying as we close? The 58th chapter of Isaiah contains present truth for the people of God. Here we see how medical missionary work and the gospel ministry are to be bound together as the message is given to the world. Upon those who keep the Sabbath of the Lord is laid, the responsibility of doing a work of mercy and benevolence. Medical missionary work is to be bound up with the message and sealed with the seal of God. I have been instructed, Medical Ministry 263, I have been instructed to refer our people to the 58th chapter of Isaiah. Read this chapter carefully and understand the kind of ministry that will bring life into the churches. The work of the gospel is to be carried by means of our liberality as well as by our labors. When you meet suffering souls who need help, give it to them. When you find those who are hungry, feed them. In doing this, you will be working in lines of Christ's ministry. The Master's holy work was a benevolent work. Let our people everywhere be encouraged to have a part in it. Isaiah 58 is the work God requires His people to do. Welfare Ministry 32. With the work of advocating the commandments of God and repairing the breach that has been made in the law of God, we are to mingle compassion for suffering humanity. We are to show supreme love to God and we are to exalt His memorial which has been trodden down by unholy feet, and with this we are to manifest mercy, benevolent and the tenderest pity for the fallen race. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As people we must take hold of this work. Love revealed for suffering humanity gives significance and power to the truth. Now, we are told we must work as Christ's work. We are to show that uh, Mingle comparing humanity. The work that God requires for this time. And you see, in the in the ministry of healing, let me just put this up. Ministry of healing. Why is that our work is not so uh successful why is it that we are doing a work and it's not so successful it is because of this minister of healing page 143 paragraph 1 and paragraph 3 let us read it everywhere there are hearts crying out for something which they have not for a power that will give mastery over sin, a power that will deliver them from the knowledge of evil, a power that will give health and life and peace. Many who once knew the power of God's word have dwelt where there is no recognition of God and they long for the divine presence. How then? Christ's method alone will give, give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence, then he bade them follow me. There is need of coming close to the people by personal effort. If less time were given to sermonizing and more time was spent in personal ministry, greater results will be seen. The poor are to be relieved, the sick cared for, the sorrowing and the bereaved comforted, ignorant instructed, the inexperienced counsel. We are to Weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. Accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of love of God, this work will not, cannot be without fruit. This is the only way that uh, our work will be successful. When we take hold of the works of atonement and work as Christ's work, we cannot keep the Sabbath holy unless we serve the Lord in the manner brought to view in the scripture, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And this is being benevolent to people. This is 
letting Christ work in us. And listen to what she says in Manuscript Release, Volume 5, page 33. Manuscript Release, page, Volume 5, page 33. We cannot keep the Sabbath holy unless we serve the Lord in the manner brought to view in the Scripture. Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. This is the work that rests upon every soul who accepts the service of Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, we are in the series, The Latter Rain, and this is the number seven, the works of atonement. The same Job's description that Christ had is the same job description that we have at such a time as this. And unless we participate in it, we are bound to failure. But if we will want us to be successful in our ministration, then we must work in the manner that Christ worked. And so, Paul, Paulson Collection, page 297, we read, I let the instruction given in the 58th chapter of Isaiah be studied. Wonderful will be the result if ministers and church members will be converted and adopt Christ's manner of witnessing to the power of the Lord. Now, remember that Christ came to manifest the name of the Father and also that victory he got and the glory that the Father clothed, with, clothed him is the same glory that he gives unto us and uh, this is brought well also in the book of uh, uh, psalms the division of psalms as we close the division of psalms 133 we read uh, a song of degrees this is what it says this is the glory that the the, the, the Son is willing to give unto us so that we may be able to go about and do the works of atonement. A song of degrees of David, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the head, upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So, what is this life? We are told, this life evermore, we are told what it is. In First John chapter 5, Chapter 5 and look at John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. We are told, uh, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And so, and this is the record, verse 11, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. And we understand that this life that we are given of the son is the partaking of the divine nature, of the spirit of God. That which we lost in the garden of Eden, of Eden is given back to us so that we may be able to do the works of atonement. I urge brothers and sisters to consider these things that we have spoken about. A successful work hangs upon us only doing the works of atonement. Just as Christ mingled with men as one who desired their good, showed them sympathy, and ministered to their need and won their confidence, then bade them to follow him. This is the works that we have to do. These are the works of atonement. And why are why is this work of the medical missionary so important? The work written in Isaiah chapter. 58 Isaiah 61 and Luke 4 18. It's because by doing good you overcome evil and it slays 
the self in you and in me look at uh, the book of uh, Romans Romans is it chapter 12 Romans if not yes look at Romans chapter 12 as we bring this to a close Romans chapter 12 I'll start from verse 9 Romans chapter 12 from verse 9 this is where we close now the word of God says be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another that is love your neighbor as you love yourself not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord so by loving our neighbor as we love ourselves we are serving the Lord patient in tribulation continuing in prayer this to saints I said given to bless them and cast not rejoice verse 15 rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that do weep be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate be not wise in your own conceits recompense to more no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men 18 if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly, beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. 20. Therefore, Isaiah 58, If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on the head. 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil by good. So by doing good, by doing good, the self in us is slain. By doing good, the self in us is slain. Think about Jesus Christ. He had everything in heaven. All he needed. He never lacked anything. But he emptied himself. He was in the form of God, but emptied himself in the form of a servant. This is what we have to do. We have to be emptied of self and be clothed with Christ. And the only work that can slay self in us is the medical missionary work. Because it is a work of giving out and not actually uh, 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 waiting or... Uh, uh, what, what can we say? Expecting to be given back. And we are told that blessed is the hand that giveth that the one that receiveth. And so this is a... Con and uh, you know one thing? When you give, your cup will never run empty. It is filled every day. But when you have a cup full of brim and you are not giving out, then it will never be empty and it cannot be filled. So Christ wants to fill our cups. And the only way he can fill them is when he fills them, we empty them. This is the science of blessings. And it is the science of slaying self. Did I say that we have read the last scripture? Let me see if I can find something in Proverbs then. I, the, the book of Proverbs chapter 11 verses 23 to 27 I know this is this has gone beyond time but allow me to read this Proverbs 11 23 to 27. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth, and yet 
increased, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to consider the works of atonement, to give your lives to Christ, to empty yourself of selfishness that has been existing, and be able to do the works that Christ has said we should be do on the work of and so I'll add this award. But there are people who are still not convinced that this world is coming to an end. I want to tell you something that the Lord has told us to do for order to do the works of atonement and the works of the third angel. He says, God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during investigative judgment. This is the purpose of which we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, our sanitarium, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. Manuscript 154-1902, paragraph 4 found in 1MR 228.2. Now, we have been given the third angel's message to prepare us to stand. And there are things that we must establish in order to stand and be able to do the works of Isaiah chapter 58. And so, if we do not do these things that have been mentioned in 1MR 228.2, then we do not have the third angel's message, then we are not prepared to stand in the time of investigative judgment. How I pray that the Lord will breathe upon us once again and we shall be able to arise from our death-like slumber and do the works of atonement. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you because we have now known what we are supposed to do in order to stand during investigative judgment and to do the works of atonement. I pray that you may give us strength and provide means to accomplish this work but more so we need the Holy Spirit, for even with, with money and without the Spirit, Father, we shall do our own things. Forgive us for slumbering, and forgive us for being hard of hearing thy word. Let thy will now be accomplished in our lives, that the Shekinah glory may fill our lives, that Christ may be able to come and take those who are just like him, and proclaim them as his own. Glory be unto thee, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you until the next presentation.